Hi, good morning, uh, church family. I just want to do a short devotion and play you a song from uh, Esther Deer. Good. Good morning once again. Uh, now this morning I was listening to the news uh, about uh, from ABC Radio. It's something uh, heartening. It's also something disheartening. It's about uh, someone ringing because uh, the wife is a nurse. They say the wife works in the emergency department uh, in the Northern El Eltham Hospital, and they will put on the face shield, the mask, and the whole body gown up, work very hard. And they came out uh, just to get some fresh air and, and, and the shift is over and they go book for not wearing the mask and then when they go to the car I think it's not the same person when they went to the car they realized that they have no time to shift the car they got fine uh, they got, got uh, parking tickets so these are the people that we got to uh, really praise God for their dedication despite all the difficulties they persevere now this morning I want to focus on uh, hope uh, I want to share something about hope. Now, most of us will be a bit disheartened by the news lately. How long will this uh, lockdown last? Now, with all the numbers not going down. So, you know, even the, the, those nurses, you know, they have to cope with abuse, the people, they, they, they put a mask all day and work. They, they, they persevere. We all do get discouraged sometimes, especially, you know, in the workplace or different people have different capacity. You know, different people get discouraged by different things. But we must, we sometimes lose a little hope or feel a little dis depressed by the news and the setbacks in our own circumstances. We may be worried about being laid off or uncertainty about the future is the greatest source of anxiety and worry. Now last Friday, Rachel shared with us uh, about mental health. I think it was very practical and we are open to discussion and uh, our minds are open up a bit. But uh, 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 and we, we, we conclude that, you know, to follow on that, that we will explore various ways on how to uh, have, uh, bring about positive hope and faith and to go through this time. We are blessed to be connected as a family of God, you know, and we can always bring, uh, send a text, give a phone call, uh, and pray with one another. Uh, uh, we can also be a blessing to our friends and families, those who do not have a church family like us. Now this is a time that we should shine, we should shine, yeah? uh, we are born for a time like this. We can always be, show a little bit of kindness and do some acts of uh, random kindness. For believers, we are privileged to have something to lean on, someone to lean on, and a family to lean on. And today I want to share some verses with you, no? uh, focusing on hope. Uh, we're going to rely on God to calm our anxiety and get back on our feet and give us hope and we survive anything the world can throw at us. Yeah? Let's explore some Bible verses. I have a few listed down here on my piece of paper. Firstly is Hebrew 11. It's about faith, the faith chapter. I think uh, uh, Brother Casey's favorite chapter too. But faith and hope are closely linked. Yeah? In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul finished the, the, the love chapter by saying that faith, hope and love. Greatest of, greatest of this is love, but we got to have faith and hope and love together. Hebrew 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is assurance of things hoped for, you see hope comes in, and the conviction of things not seen. By faith we understand that the universe was created by God and by the word of God, so that what is seen is not made out of things that are visible. You see, our faith is based on God who created the universe. We are not here by chance. We have a purpose. We have a destiny. Because God created us. He created the universe. He created everything. And He was, He was, He is, and He is to come. And a God who is everlasting too. Now hope is to see the invisible. To see the invisible is to have faith and hope. Hope is a longing. You realize that? Faith is to be sure that God we trust will deliver the promises we hope for. 
So in First Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, it says, He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last time for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God. We are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. And God already planned all this. This verse is saying, who God who raised him from the dead and give him glory, so that your faith and your hope are in God. Our faith and hope are in God, no, through Jesus Christ. Roman has a, a, a few places to talk about hope. Especially Roman 5, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 5, verse 3 to 5, it says, We rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Another, verse, another version says, hope does not disappoint. Because God's love has been poured out in our hearts. Can you see the faith, hope and love again? Now, Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 24 to 25. For in hope we were saved. Of course, we saved by faith. But now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hope for what he sees? Right? We always hope for something we do not see. Yet to be seen. Yeah. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. It's the hope that gives us patience to, to endure the journey and to finish finish strong and finish victorious. Romans 8 has a lot of promises. It's a, it's a chapter of Christian living, living in the Spirit. It talks about empowering the Holy Spirit. Uh, we can pray with the Spirit. Uh, and, and, and the courage and the strength and the hope all come from the Spirit. So, uh, uh, in 24, chapter 8, verse 24 says, For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hope for what he sees? And if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it in patience. With patience. Uh, repeating this verse again. Further down the chapter, verse 31, it says, What then shall we see when we say to these things, If God is for us, who can be against us? And he who did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for us, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? I always love these verses. He says, uh, I call it, uh, I think John Piper called it the logic of heaven. If God will not withhold his precious son, his most precious son, what else will withhold from us? It's like, you know, you love someone, you will not withhold even your own life. What else will withhold? God will not withhold anything from us. So, uh, and, and Paul finished the, 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 the letter or the book of Romans with this, with, with a few a very encouraging a verse and it was also talking about hope Romans 15 verse 13 says uh, I read it in the uh, Passion Translation which is more powerful it says this is a wonderful prayer it says now may God the inspiration and the fountain of hope fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and with perfect peace as you trust in him and may the power of the Holy Spirit continue to surround your life with his super abundance until you radiate in hope. How many times hope is being mentioned here? We radiate with hopes. Our face shines because we have hope. We can have joy. We can have certainty. We can overcome all adversity. Hope you are blessed by uh, the reading of God's word. I hope you continue to have faith and hope in this God. And when we come forth of this and this period of uncertainty and we will be victorious. We can be a blessing. Even right now, we can be a blessing to the people around us by acts of kindness, by, by a voice of faith, a voice of hope. May God bless you.